boys and girls, right now what we're going to do is we're going to log on to the internet. But I the internet has facilitated a whole new world of learning. Where is Miss Junie 2 right now? Costa Rica. Costa Rica. Good. Connecting people and cultures that are worlds apart. <laughs> Increasingly, the internet also provides an alternative to traditional classroom instruction virtual classes that are open 24-7 to students like these sophomores at Daniel Jenkins School in Haines City, Florida. Here at Daniel Jenkins, the students actually come to school and do their classes online. Um, and normally, most of the students would actually do this lab at home, but getting oysters and squids in this area, it's kind of hard for the students, so I was able to obtain those and bring them out and actually interact with the students. Does everybody see something that's kind of silvery, shiny? Out of the close to 200 students that I'll deal with this year, I will only see maybe 10 of those students. So this is really a great opportunity as an instructor. Students better in a virtual classroom than in a real one. Being the online instructor, you have a more personal relationship with your students because we do interact with them online. I also identify their strengths and weaknesses much more quickly, I think, than in the regular classroom because I deal with them only. Virtual school. Established in 2000, the nation's first internet-based public school offers virtual learning options for grades 7 through 12. We offer a full high school curriculum and they are all the courses that a student would actually need to graduate to get a diploma. Although we don't offer a diploma and that is by design. Our role here in the state of Florida is to actually fill the gaps of our public and our private schools. For example, our rural districts have less access to high quality courses and high quality teachers. Online learning brings that to their doorstep. In rural West Virginia, schools are now required to offer foreign language classes in 7th and 8th grade. But in small towns like Fayetteville, there aren't enough qualified teachers to do the job. West Virginia Virtual School provides a solution with teachers like Joyce McClanahan, who is lead teacher for 21 Spanish classes in 15 different West Virginia middle schools. Jesus, we must use the infinitive after me gusta. Me gusta escribir novelas. Now, I actually don't start teaching till about a quarter till eight, and I teach basically 45 minute classes. My school day generally ends around 3.30, and then after a short break, students will start calling if they need extra help at night. So uh, the job usually goes to about 10 at night. Okay, good. Let's do a sound check real quick, and if it's all right, then we'll go ahead and get started. There aren't enough qualified teachers for every course in the Las Vegas school system either, in part because Clark County accepts 15,000 new students each year. To address that shortage and to save money on bricks and mortar, the county offers some 4,500 students virtual courses in everything from public health to microeconomics. You have the full period to do this. Like many of his students, geometry teacher Mike Patterson now splits his time between real classrooms and virtual ones. I'm able to interact on a live whiteboard with the students. They raise their hand and, and I see them uh, in front of me. Uh, we speak uh, through the mic. If you look at your work and see if you should have been adding instead of multiplying them. As a teacher, I also have some flexibility. I'm not run bell by bell. I can grade papers on the front porch. It's a very different kind of an experience, a very fun one for me. It's very invigorating to my teaching career to try something like this. For students, virtual schools offer the opportunity to take courses not available at their regular schools and to fit them into their individual... It allowed her to leave school during the day so that she could skate on an ice surface. Work at competitions or I can access it when I come home and get the work done that I missed without really missing anything. Virtual High School is a non-profit collaborative of over 300 high schools in 26 states and 16 foreign countries that offers more than 150 high school courses over the Internet. Each participating school contributes a course to the mix. They agree to free up a teacher one period a day to teach a course online and VHS provides the training services for that classroom teacher to learn how to effectively teach online. 
I think a really critical element of a good online course is the ability to build a community of learners in that course. We design our courses so that the students are engaged in online activities, they're engaged in online collaboration. We wanted to provide opportunities for students to, to take advanced courses to try to accelerate their learning, whether they are having significant challenges in the classroom or whether they're very advanced and can move rapidly through material. This is almost like a textbook, all my controls are here. For Zubin Patel, VHS means taking advanced computer science courses like cryptography at home. The VHS basically allows me to take these courses that aren't offered at school. It means extra work, it means staying up some nights to three in the morning doing VHS work. He took the virtual school's 15-week teacher training, covering subjects like how to foster online discussions. For their online classmates, what they listened to, what they saw. The tone in our voice doesn't get transmitted over uh, the internet connection. So you have to be very careful with wording and really spell out your expectations. And that's, you know, the hindrance, I guess, of being disconnected from the students physically. But a lot of it's quite the same, too. You, you build collaborative um, projects. You do a lot of community building activities to try to find the sense of the class and the personality of the individuals in the class, too. Yeah, you can click right up here and just drag that title out. The rigorous teacher training and engaging course designs seem to be paying off. The completion rate for VHS courses is 90 percent, and VHS AP students score 10 percentage points higher than the national average on their final exams. But even its biggest booster warns against over-reliance on virtual learning. I don't believe you can have a completely virtual education. I don't think that it's appropriate for students to have all their courses virtually. And I think the social environment of the high school is an important environment. And while students see many advantages to online courses, they also recognize that virtual schooling isn't for everyone. I think when you're working online, you have to be a lot more self-motivated. Your teacher is not sitting there, you know, read these pages and make sure you have this done by this time. You, you know what you have to do by the end of the quarter and you just take care of it yourself. And I know a lot of students who don't have that self-motivation do get behind because no one's there nagging. Technology continues to advance and teacher training improves. Online learning holds even greater promise. The students are going to be able to use technology much more easily and readily than ever before. Not only taking full online courses, but taking parts of courses online so that you would have what they call blended, having teachers in the regular classrooms teaching face-to-face -face with the potential of this as being a tremendous method of improving the quality of education, both in our region and across the country. Okay.